going on everybody? This is your man Chuck Creekmer, aka Jigsaw. I'm here with a pair of legends, DJ Pete Rock peace, peace. and DJ Benami. What's good? But what people don't know is aside from hip hop, DJing, and all that b-boy stuff, we're all comic book nerds, all sci-fi nerds, geeks, or whatever you want to call it, deeply entrenched in the world, a fantasy world, if you will, filled with superheroes and superstars and all types of things. So, we're here because Stan Lee's birthday is today, and happy birthday, Stan. yeah, we want to give Stan a super salute from the other side of town. He's got a lot of fans in the world, but the hip-hop crowd has been holding Stan down for a very long time. So, first things first, I want to ask you guys, you know, what's your kind of quote-unquote relationship to Stan Lee? How were you kind of introduced to his, his work, his writing, his, you know, creations? Um, on daily walks to the store with my mom, you know, my mm -hmm. grandmother, and you know, walking in the store and seeing this tall metal rack of books. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And getting excited of all these colors and these characters and these BAM words and big, big, bold letters. And you know, it just attracted us as kids, you know, me and my younger brothers. Right. So, you know, we gravitated over to the books and picked them up and opened them up. And History was yeah. And Stan was always a prominent, prominent yeah. fixture back in the day. Yeah. When you opened a book, he was highly promoted. Yes. Um, he never owned Marvel, but yeah. he was, it seemed like he did. Yeah, and, and you would see his name on the books like that. You yeah. would think he owned Marvel. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we, we were excited to even just see his name. Yeah. You know, knowing that he was involved, you know, just kept us interested. Definitely. What about you, Ben? My first Stanley was like when, um, even before the comics, I think, was when I first saw him and heard his voice on the Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends cartoon. Right. Because he would narrate or announce every episode and he'd do his Excelsior. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so that was when I first heard about Stan Lee. But like you said, then not knowing what he looked like, just knowing the voice, I was like, okay, who is this dude yeah. who's hype about this episode every yeah. week? Right. And then when I started getting the comics after that was, you know, his he'd always have the soapbox mm -hmm. and then the little intro line would be him where he'd say mm -hmm. something about each comic yeah. and it, was, yeah, it just became Stan the Manly yeah. and you started hearing the stories and the legends and right. yeah, that's how I got into him definitely yeah. was there. Yeah, for me it was pretty much in the comic books and yeah, Stan the Man. It always yeah, like, yeah. Oh, that's the man. Yeah. Like, okay. The coolest shades ever. Right. Right. I've only seen Stan without his shades one, one time. time. I saw him with a, in a Michael Jackson video with him and Michael Jackson, wow. and he takes his glasses off to put an Iron Man wow. helmet on. Wow. So like, wow, okay. It's funny, too. Like, even, you know, once he passed, there was all those pics of him when he was mad young that I'd never right. seen. Yeah. Like, the joints with him and his wife, and yeah. he's dumb young. He doesn't have his glasses right. there. Right, true, He had true. just black hair, yeah. looking like a dude. Yeah. It hit like, like yeah. leave it to Beaver. Yeah. You know? And he really branded himself. Yo, the sure. man, yeah, the man became an icon. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I'm staying the man. It's like, yeah. Peter yeah. Parker putting his mask on. There it is, true, yeah. True, true, Yep. That's crazy. Um, you know, obvious, this is an obvious question, but... Why is he important? I think cultural-wise, he's important um, because, you know, he's captured every little kid's heart. Mm -hmm. and, then it, and, you know, once you capture a little kid's heart, it, it, it kind of sticks with you, and, and, you know, until you grow, you grow. And I think the books itself were very exciting to read, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Reading, you know, about the characters and seeing people fighting in the books. It, it's just, it was just something that inspired us all and made us want to be what we were seeing yeah even even, even if it was a villain right right you know a lot of the characters you know Stan created or co-created were very relatable mm. that's the one thing I think is different from other creators in other um, you know worlds or whatever yeah. um, what would you say about that same thing like you were saying like even like I mean there were other stories that were like Marvel before you know Stan put the imprint on it, but there wasn't like that where you had characters like Peter Parker, like we were talking about, who you know everyone could relate to. And then you know once he puts on the mask, you don't even know. And even Stan has said that before. You know he could be white, black, he could be anything underneath the mask. Yeah, because you just don't know. But you still relate to him as Peter Parker or like the X Men who 
you know, even when they were all white, they still represented the downtrodden and the minority group. Yeah. So people like us could all, because I all grew up loving Cyclops. That was right. like one of my yeah. favorite characters. Mm -hmm. And this is white dude. Right. But I felt how Cyclops, you know, had to keep his powers under check mm -hmm. and had to keep himself contained, you know, because as a black dude, yeah. we all relate to that. That's like li everyday life for us. Right. Yeah. Facts, facts. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, leads me to my next, you know, question in, in terms of, um, you know, yeah, black people, mm -hmm. hip hop, mm -hmm. we clearly have a different way of seeing things and even looking at some of these heroes. Um, but hip hop has a special relationship two comic books and Stan Lee was a was almost like a translator in some ways of mm -hmm. of, of of culture and, and it crossed all genres. How what what's the special relationship that hip hop has and how do you feel about that? I think I, we feel that, that what Stan did for us, we feel that he's given us some power. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because to to this day I've taken that power and put it to what I do in real life, which is music. Mm -hmm. And and I you know, felt, and I've always said that I, you know, if I'm going to do something in life, I want to do be the best. Mm -hmm. at, you know, do the, you know, at my best ability. So I, I kind of <laughs> called myself, you know, the Hulk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and said I'm a Hulk out on this on this music and yeah. some dope beats. You know, That's and, crazy. You know. It's funny because uh, for me, Stan influenced one of my heroes, DMC. Mm -hmm. Well, Run DMC, but mm -hmm. specifically DMC. Because little did I know, he was reading comic books, and he was taking on a comic book character yeah. as he was a hip hop artist. And the funny thing is, he never spoke to him. Right. Like, Word. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I just found out. You didn't know. You didn't know at the time. Yeah. After the fact. Right. Oh, you a comic book guy? Yeah. And then when you look at it, knock down, you know, doors, you know, they yeah. were yeah. mad visual. Yes. You know, and they were literally the superheroes. Of hip hop, that's like, what I'm saying. Yeah. This is what Stan did for us. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Run DMC is a perfect example of that. Yeah. Um, so, what do you? How do you feel about you know the, the relationship between hip hop specifically and comics? What Stan kind of presented to us? How do you, you know? What do you think? I think it's the same thing like we were saying like about the mask and how like you were saying like you see yourself as the Hulk mm -hmm. and you know you put on the you know you turn into another person like you became Pete Rock yes. and like with me I know I became DJ Ben I mean you know mm -hmm. I wasn't DJ Ben I mean and then I'd stand behind the turntables and I'd be like okay I'm a you know this is the mask I gotta put on I gotta throw on the cape mm -hmm. and become the superhero yeah. and so that was you know we all saw ourselves in all these characters and then I think Stan brought that other thing to it too and the, that hip hop has is that rebellious side of it. You know, yeah. that I'm just gonna do it my way and yeah. I'm gonna make it happen however it's gotta happen. And that was like Stan Lee, you know, that, and then the boasting. That's right. real, you know, yeah. when you really talk about Stan Lee, that's where, you know, probably where dumb DMC, probably half of us, you know, get that shit talking from. It's right. from like, you know, Stan, because yeah. Stan would go out there and just, this is the best ever, you know, it's right. the greatest thing you've ever read. Right. You've never seen this, what I'm about to present. Right. It's the most awesome, you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> like, all right, this must yeah. be good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. because he already hyped it up for you, and it's the same thing. It's like, you know, like, we, I know you feel the same way when you DJ. I, like, the lesson I learned was, like, if I'm not feeling the song, the crowd's not going to feel the song. So I got to be up there like, this the hottest joint ever. Why are y'all not dancing? You know, like. The people will see your reaction. Yep. Feeling that you're the important person and go with your reaction. There you go. Yeah. And so that's the same thing. Stan would sit there and be like, this is the best ever. And we're like, word. Stan the man said it's the best. Right. You know, this must be this. He Let was me a read great this. salesman. Yeah. I mean. Incredible. It, it, it goes beyond. Like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you wouldn't have, you know, like that's. I think people always talk about, you know, the co-creators and everything that went on and. None of us were there, so I never want to say, yo, who did what. I'm not sure. I know everybody was involved, but when it comes down to that selling, yeah. you know, we wouldn't have the, the Marvel Universe. We wouldn't have all these films, video games, et cetera, without Stan. There's oh, yeah. no that's question. True. There's no, you know, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's it. That's why Mar Marvel gave him the bag. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> yo, anytime a work, an employee, yeah, I mean, Basically, yeah, it's well deserved. I yeah, well deserved, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, he got the whole bag. Yeah. 
So I already know Pete's favorite. Yeah. The Hulk. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna ask Ben who your favorite superhero is. That Stan. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's a couple, but it goes between Silver Surfer and Galactus. Mm. Yeah, that's probably my top. Okay. Because Silver Surfer and Galactus were like, you know, as a kid, especially reading that stuff, it was so other level. Like, I grew up on Star Wars and Star Trek and all that stuff, but Silver Surfer was this dude flying through space and having, like, philosophical discussions about life and the meaning of the universe and all this stuff. So I'm a little kid, like... Fuck. What? <laughs> what? Right. You know, and Galactus is over here like I'm a force in between life and death. I'm a force mm. that people can't understand. Can't, Y'all can't even. The captions. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. We just started Which getting to like him. The pictures, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. The action in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. The actions, but you know, we enjoyed bam, boom, slap, and, you know, all that. And then Hulk, and then but then also Doctor Doom. Yeah, because yeah. Doctor Doom, Do- Dr. Dr. Doom yeah. is you know like when you talk about. Vernable and characters, and you know, dude with a mask, mm-hmm. and underneath it is all this, you know, rage and yeah. all that. Like, come on. Mine was definitely the Hulk growing up because mm-hmm. I was a, I was a shy kid. Yeah. So the Hulk represented both sides of me because you know, back in the day, I wouldn't get in a fight unless somebody either picked on me or picked mm-hmm. on my brother. Poke, 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 poke. Yep. Right, yeah. exactly. And then it's, 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 then then it's, it's blackout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, what have I done? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can relate to that struggle. But I also love Wolverine. Yes. Mm. That's my you guy, know? Spider-Man. You yeah. Sam, you just named my top three. I did? Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Wolverine, Spider-Man, and Hulk. Yeah. Hulk number one. Yeah, mm. definitely. To this day, my mom buys me anything Hulk related. Like, nice. it might be a VH tape from the thrift shop yeah. or something, and she'll yeah. just give it to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get that stuff from people. Yeah. They give me that stuff and laugh at me. <laughs> yeah, I got like so much Hulk stuff. In fact, my daughter broke one of my Hulks, and I was so Bro. mad for the longest, <laughs> longest time. But I just yeah. let it go because she was little at the time. Yeah. So. Um, what about um, the lyrical part of it? You know, uh, Sugar Hill Gang started out in 79, name dropping. Well, that was definitely not Stan Lee, but, you know, it was comic books. You yeah. Know? You got Meth and Johnny Blaze and Ghostface and... The whole Wu-Tang. Yeah, the whole Wu-Tang. Now, Ghostface tried to tell me he's not a comic nerd, but I'll be like, how are you so intimately related? You know what, though? You know, street guys, you know... Sometimes they just want to take on the, the powerful name of it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The ego just, you know, they just want the name. You right. Know what I'm Some of them are not comic nerds. Right. You know what I'm but then you have some that, that went into it. You know yeah. I think Method is definitely yeah, a comic nerd. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Into it and maybe uh, Strike of Deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Deck has a whole alias, yeah. Zarface. Yeah. Mm. They did a um, yeah. they did an album with he did an album with MF Doom. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. he expressed to me Spider Man his face. Mm. Am I doing? No, that. Oh, that. Yeah, yeah, because it's TV name drops. Swing, yeah, swinging in the like yeah. the neighborhood Spider Man. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Now, um, so you you alluded to it earlier, Ben, but um, culturally, talk about Stan Lee and how some of his inspirations. You know, you've got Black Panther. The X Men is like a symbol of Black people. Malcolm X, Malcolm Martin, X, Martin, Martin Luther King, King. Mm-hmm. like, like these are like, it's almost revolutionary. I mean, yeah. I really do consider it revolutionary. I mean, you're talking the '60s. Mm-hmm. Um, can you guys guys both speak on sort of that aspect of it? And um, all right, well, like um, Stan, like even in his like we were talking about his soapboxes earlier, which for people who don't know are like his um, editorial columns that mm-hmm. would be in all the comics. And there's a real famous one, like when he passed, I posted it on my Instagram, where he's just like straight up and down, and this is 1960s, 70s, and he's like, our biggest enemies right now is bigotry, racism, you know, hate of people of different sexual orientations, just all this stuff. He's like, none of that. You know, this is whack. He's like, that's trash. That's not what we're about. That's not what comics are about. And we stand against all that. Mm. And that's not even in his characters, you know, that's just straight up in his own thoughts and his own words. Right. And so that was, you know, 
way ahead of its time. And then when you talk about creating Black Panther, it just, I mean, every time I think about it, it just bugs me out. Like, I don't even understand what he was on where he was like, all right, I'm going to make a character who's from an African country that's never been colonized. Right. You know? Then and then the first time he meets the Avengers, he's gonna be like, "Nah, I'm good," yeah. and you know, whip all the asses and then bounce right. and go back to Africa. Like, "Nah, I got you know a kingdom to take care of." Yeah. And so it's like, what was this white dude thinking about? Like, <laughs> where did that come from? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And it's basically, you know, he was neutral when it came to racism. Mm-hmm. And wanted everyone to get along. Yeah. To be the black man that is like telling the truth about African resources. Mm-hmm. You know, That alone, that character, that story alone, yeah, really, really, you know, tuned me into this man. Mm-hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah. And he's a white man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it was like, you know, wow, man. Yeah, on Facebook when I when Stan passed, I was like. Yeah, I was kind of broke up. Yeah, I'm bro. not gonna lie. Like, oh man. Yeah, I was yeah. tore up. I was just like, yo. So I posted all my pictures. People were texting me, "Are you okay? You all right?" You good? Yeah. Even my little godson, was, yeah. I was like, yo, I'm all right, man. I'm all right, all right? <laughs> yeah. Stop asking right, me. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, you know, that definitely, you know, he's, yeah. I don't know if it was overtly or just out of the kindness of his heart, but he just created these these characters that we could we could definitely relate to. Yeah, and enough respect, though, to Jack Kirby. Yeah, of course, John I'm sorry. Cima, yeah. Steve Ditko. Uh, Steve Ditko and all the writers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right beside him with his ideas. Yeah. Helping yeah. him pull it together, man. Definitely, absolutely, absolutely. You know, the one... Uh, and his wife. Right. That's the other one that people don't talk about is like how he wanted to quit comics. Mm-hmm. And then his wife was like, before you quit. And that's, it's, I mean, it's so many things about Stan I really like too, real quick. They're like, because he was 39 when this happened. Right. You know, and all like today's, you know, everybody's like, oh, you got to be, you know, if you're not doing it by this age, you're done. You know, yeah. and it's this terrible idea because Stan was 39 years old tired of working in comics sick of it mm-hmm. he done romance he done like westerns all this stuff written everything mm-hmm. and then he was like I'm done and his wife was like alright do one more that's what you want to see right and then you can be done mm-hmm. and he was like alright and he went and made Fantastic Four wow <laughs> you know and it's like and and then turns around after that and makes Daredevil Iron Man uh, you know all the characters Silver Surfer etc you know X-Men just Black Panther. Right. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, you really like all the Marvel characters, heroes, and villains. You really like all of them, but then you just take to a few that just yeah. Yeah. Just in love. Yeah. 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 Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, yeah. everything. And this is all, like, four, like he was like 43 when right. he made Black Panther. Mm-hmm. Right. Because Black Panther was like three or four years down the line after that. That's yeah. crazy. Amazing. Yeah. I was blessed enough to, um, to meet Stan... And when I met him, he had a little pin, and it had a black hand and a white hand, like. Wow. wow. You know, and I was like, he. This dude. I was like. <laughs> and, then, and then he made a. You gotta love the man. He made a small <laughs> speech about it, and I was like, yo, he's <laughs> still at it. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's still at it. Oh, man. It, was, it tripped me up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, what he wanted for the world, what he wanted to see in the world. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was a so, do you guys have a favorite moment, a favorite stand moment that you um, you may have ever seen in the movies or you know any in any form really? I don't know because everybody loves the movies now and everybody loves all his cameos and all that. I still go back to like the comics and the mm-hmm. um, that, but then I will say like we were talking about it earlier the. Um, Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man game for PlayStation. Mm -hmm. They have a Stan Lee cameo in that. And I don't know if it was because he just passed when, you know, or he passed right after I played it, but it was just one of those moments and what he says in it, it just got me, you know, and it was just like, oh. And like y'all said, like, when he passed, now I was, there's no hiding. I was broke up, you yeah, know. I was yeah. shedding tears, and then I was our child. I yeah, was our and then people were sharing all these memories, and you you know hear stories. And I remember, I think Gail Simone, this writer, you know, big time comics writer, she was like, "Look, I met Stan like four times in my life, and every time it was a moment, and all that he acted about and talked about, that was him. He wanted the best for all of us. Yeah. He loved 
his fans. Yeah. You know, he loved what he created and loved that people got this from it. Yeah. yeah, so that, you know, like you said, that just keeps making it hurt more because you're like, this dude really was that dude, yeah. you know? Yeah. like the obscure findings of, like, I'll be on YouTube looking for, like, you know, that obscure stuff people don't know about. Mm-hmm. Seen yeah. Like, right. Him on the set of Incredible Hulk TV show. Mm. Yeah. Laughing with Bill Bixby and Ruth Riggin. Yeah. You know, they're talking about scenes and stuff like that. So, <sighs> stuff like that I like to pose and show people. I gotta find that now. I got it. Yeah. yeah, there's some Mr. Rogers, you remember when, when, when Mr. Rogers, you remember that old Mr. Rogers episode with Bill Gates? The whole, they got him doing the makeup and everything. What? Yeah, I remember him doing the makeup. Yeah, I remember him doing the makeup. I remember that. Um, Or like when the, when he's with Todd McFarlane and Rob LaField exactly. and sunning them. Right. And giving yeah. them the business. Like, oh, you draw hands? <laughs> 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 He's like, how many more pouches are you going to put on right, there? Right. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, 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 crazy. All right. Um, final words on, on, you know, Stan Lee, the legacy, you know, as it relates to us or whatever. How, you know, what are um, your final thoughts? I just want to say thank you, Stan Lee, for mm-hmm. what you did for my life mm-hmm. and the inspiration you've given me to do, to apply it to real life. Yeah. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Even though I had parents and stuff like that raising me, yeah. you know, the right way. True. He raised me a certain way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I want to thank him for that. Thank you, Stan Lee, for that. Word. Salute. You know what I'm saying? Salute to that. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. And even like you, we were all saying, just the inspiration and, you know, everything he brought into the world to see somebody. Like, that's what, that was one of the ones that broke me up was there was this uh, editorial cartoon when he passed. And it was like Stan standing in front of basically heaven. And God's looking down on him, and it's like, God is like, you're pretty good at creating universes yourself, kid. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, right. you know. Real talk. Because that's, that's that, crazy. you know, that's that's where we all want to be left. You know, we want to yeah. leave something behind, and you want to be able to, and that, you know, that, what he left behind is like, come on now. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 yeah, for sure. Yeah, for me, I definitely, you know, salute him. I, I also salute my parents because... My teacher, actually, I take that back. Not my parents. I salute my <laughs> fifth grade teacher for convincing my parents mm. to let me continue to read comics. Nice, yeah. You know, because there was a stigma attached. Oh, yeah, you yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, and they I were like, I got to oh, yeah. shout my parents, but they were definitely not. They were like, they were definitely like, okay, you go in your room with that, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. they were yeah. definitely like, here, you take them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah read it. Yeah, yeah read it. To, to yeah, so. yeah. Definitely, man. Well, Stan, salute yeah, to the family. Continue on. Word. And we will continue dedicating certain parts of our lives to what Stan has created and um, and really paying homage, man. Because, you know, sure. um, one thing I said to him when I did meet him, I didn't talk for long, but I did tell him, you changed my life. Mm. And that's... End of story. Yeah. That's yeah. the end of it. Yeah. All right? Thanks. Right. Salute, y'all. Peace. Cool, cool, cool.